hello everyone uh, so welcome back to my channel and uh, today I am going to talk about Microsoft Teams uh, in Office 365 and uh, or you talk about Microsoft 365 I will talk about what all are the messaging policies that you can apply it uh, like earlier we have an Skype for business but now it's renamed as team and everything is based on a team only uh, what all the audio conferencing support options uh, what all security and the compliance center and what exactly the options are available in Microsoft 365 uh, security and compliance and about exchange online retention taggings uh, audit reports configuration uh, Microsoft 365 service health information audit reportings and service request how we can raise it and then uh, troubleshooting tools so like uh, remote connectivity analyzer or uh, remote uh, uh, recovery assistant sorry so this is what uh, we will talk about in today's video so let's start on this Okay, let's moving on that. Okay, for the first part is as an in introduction to Microsoft Team. So as I initially said uh, earlier, we have an Skype for Business. Even in the couple of organizations, they are using the Skype for Business as a server, as a client also. But at Microsoft Office 365 or um, Microsoft 365, PC, it's renamed as and now it's named as Team only. So team is a utility that provides uh, you uh, communication between people of different organization within your organization. It provides the functionality of your unified communication and you can share your uh, documents, files, etc. Apart from uh, IM chatting and it basically enables your infrastructure with a voice as well as for the video communication like you can uh, do video callings you can do meetings web conferencing video conferencing so these all functionalities you will get in your team apart from that you can share your uh, information or do a chat with, that is called instant messaging you can do it as well as uh, it will pro provide an integration of third-party apps uh, you can set uh, chat bots integrate uh, with this so a lot of things are available we can see step by step all what all functionalities are available but the most popular or most required functionality that is your instant messaging uh, and uh, voice and video calling and web conferencing so for uh, the organization this is the or in the corporate sector this is the tool that is used for the primary purpose okay for the Microsoft team if we talk about the infrastructure background so Microsoft maintain the entire structure at the cloud and you will be getting as a end user services just similar as uh, Outlook web app and Outlook web services or Outlook uh, you're using for the mail service it's integrated with your Microsoft Azure Active Directory. So user management, multi-factor authentication, like MFA, etc. Those functionalities are still available with your Microsoft Teams. Apart from that, it's integrated with your uh, Exchange mailboxes and along with your uh, SharePoint portal service also. So it's... Uh, one of the best solution for instant messaging I will just give you a little bit more details uh, for team here you can set it up you can create a teams with that would be collaborated with the Microsoft when you are creating a team like whenever you are creating a group for communication it will SharePoint online site and the exchange group mailboxes automatically created and hosted so how it's working and the authentication is based on Azure AD, 
as an MFA obviously you can integrate your on-premises and the similar authentication it's not like a different one if you have gone through my previous videos of uh, this business to professional 0365 series you will know that uh, the authentication purpose like hybrid federation so it's also applicable in Microsoft team okay okay in Microsoft team you can allow a guest access also suppose you have some vendors or your partner organization or not exactly a partner might be it could be participants those are a vendor suppliers or anyone whom you want to join as a guest you can extend your access to them it would be totally depends on you how your organization policies are going to set by default it's turned off but you want you can allow it a specific to tenant level that is by your end you can also extend your web conferencing with external partners so without uh, login credentials they can join your web conferences and they can participate in their web conferences power bi's other uh, applications are also integrated in this so which you can uh, show uh, graphics or data representation and the best thing is that you can manage your messaging policies like when you define a channel channel is a place where you can uh, share your thoughts or you can uh, dis uh, put some discussion points uh, I will show you what exactly user and user will be getting in the team so here you can see the edit and send messages you can chat with them you can control the chat messages translation a lot of things are there the default policies are uh, global or quite default policy you can define a custom policies as per your requirement and team admin center from the team admin center you can define the policy or manage the policies as same as for the windows powershell also you need to connect your powershell to cloud or uh, o365 and then you can uh, define the policies from there Okay, I think I moved away okay so how it's basically working let me quickly show you okay before moving to security center let me quickly show you Microsoft okay once I move to admin center you can see and scroll down you will get a teams admin earlier it was a sky for business so when I logged into this one Teams Admin Center see what will get next okay so this is how the dashboard is available your team is upgrading status is available you can see no activity you can just get in whatever activities happen or performed in last ways okay so when I clicked on team you can see the manage team is here currently I have a total eight users are available and I have only a single the default one channel which is available here so let me quickly add it from here add a new team and this is sales team suppose okay for the sales users I am adding a team here Who will be the admin details so this is what I just clicked on that take a couple of minutes okay now you can see the team is created and when I clicked on this I'll be getting more options so currently the default admin is owner is added because from the account which I added here so let me quickly search it the users whom I want to add it here okay so these are the users I just want to add sales su1 okay let me see who uh, for which account i logged in right now in the sales okay that is sales user one so i let me add this also okay sales uh, u1 and sales and the account which i used to log in is and also one more account 
variable that is is u2 let me add it okay so i've added these three users as a member okay now it's added here okay youtube doesn't have an username anyways let's have a look okay here the sales user one you can see new team skep has added you in the new team i can see it now because i logged in from this account so i got that message in my client this is the team client where i logged in right now okay this is the sales team and nothing is shared till now if i want to communicate something with uh, someone i can simply start new conversation here okay it's just as a discussion in the team and this is the default channel which is channel if you want to create more channels i just try to do it okay accessible to everyone or the level of access i can define it here let me quickly add it okay so these are the discussion topics in the form of channel and where if, if i want to share something i can put it like notes etc and information if i want to start a communication i can just put a communication like uh, dsr report for example okay i place that so these are the two channels which i placed it here and let me quickly switch it to a different user which is i logged in on a different machine and okay i'm just sending a test from there and see what will next or i may start a new conversation okay see in the general a uh, couple of messages i placed it from another user where which i logged in on a different machine so you can see the text is available this is how the users can communicate and now i just go back in my channel and see so these are the local one the local sales which i have just created as a from end user so this would be a de totally depend if you have allowed the access then only you can align it otherwise it will not give you permission to access the same the sales one so here only the three members are added apart from the owner and the role you can define it from here as a owner or as a member for the channel of settings would be available here like uh, conversation editing you are allowing your delete if you want to restrict the delete you can also change it if you want edit you can edit it from here from the right side top and look at this adding channel to existing ones add remove tabs remove conversation so the settings that can be edited from this side only If I go in the team's policies, and once you click on that, so this is the default policy is available. If you want to add your custom policy, you can add it here, or you can just try to edit the policies. Create private channel is allowed as per this. If I restrict this policy, then the channel which I have created here, like this local sales user will not be getting access to create it if i want to do a one-to-one -one conversation so 
this is the user account I will show that also let me just quickly go to chats okay private chat and calling option is available here so from this you can uh, check start uh, the conversation okay enter the name of the person whom you want to communicate uh, sales to I think this one is the sales user one okay I'm sending a message as hello let's just send that message let me see if that person receive it or not okay so this is what I have a one-to-one -one conversation if I click on files I can see the files etc if uh, shared I have shared something or the person has shared or something and apart from that you can watch the organization level structure as well as activities if anything is happened with that user okay so this is the end user section and this is what we have in the structured policy at uh, admin portal we have a couple of team templates available here we can add it as per our requirement then if we were talk about more details uh, the IP phones IP phones are not supported in most of the regions it would be available in couple of regions only when you have an audio conferencing integrated team rooms are available so let me okay it's because I have not created a room or any so that's why it's not giving me device information and so this is what about all about the devices so you can control it if you have a certified devices integrated with your team or sky for business location restrictions and uh, it's totally depend for the enterprise voice you may refer my series I will be launching a series for sky for business business to professional and in that I will show what exactly uh, the PST integration what exactly the policies dial plans everything I will cover it in more detail related to sky for business uh, business to professional series so you can watch on that series and see more detail on this if we talk about the users so that would be available here the similar way which we have seen in exchange admin in my last video so for the exchange admin if you click on this you will be getting exchange specific information the same pattern when you clicked on uh, teams and team admin center users you will be getting settings specific to uh, team or sky for business so let me quickly click on the user so from here you can see the voice call history policies the policies are default policies currently all applied if I want to change it I can edit it from here right now I have not created that if other policies so I am not getting it here like this uh, only the default ones are exist most of them I can change it and apply the specific policies that can be possible to change it through uh, PowerShell also so either you can use PowerShell or this admin center okay for the meeting level meeting policies from here you can define the meeting policies if you want to edit it uh, you can all on you can see these are the options this is the default one for all on if you want to customize it you can click add and create the policy as per your requirement here you can define your content sharing allow restrict this is one or you want to disable it uh, and allow trans transcriptions allow cloud recording allow meet now in channel like meet now is the option so you can start meeting from here directly uh, from this chat itself only so that you want to allow it or you want to restrict it 
outlook add-ins it's allowed or not so these are the things you can restrict in your meeting policies same as you have meeting specific settings allow anonymous users to join the meeting that is uh, recommended when you want to extend your conferencing to external users here you can put your uh, logos and legal information etc if you want to put it the port range if you want to specify the default ports are always uh, use for communication but apart from that if your organization defines a set of port range then you can specify it live events and their settings that is also um, limited or restricted in couple of countries so you can just check it out the availability in your organization and this is the most important part which is your messaging policies so I can add it here here you can see the owner can delete the sender message if I own it then uh, okay I just need to tap my custom policies or support sales sales user policies so I just created a policy for sales user where I can delete send messages I turned off edit as allowed user control re receipt like turn off for everyone I can change the changes as per my requirement create voice messages allowing chat and channels both or allowing channels only let me quickly save the couple of changes so this policy when I have created a policy you can see the global policy assignments nothing is there so I can add it from here let me quickly go back in my user okay this is the user and how can we apply the policies so From here you can see the policy and okay so this is the default global one which I just edited and let me quickly go back at user and assign it So I can edit the policies and here you will get an options to change it. Same as if you have a, a policy for dial planet sector, you can also change it. That is not available. You can see I have created a policy for messaging that is sales user policy. So I can apply it for this user. This can be possible through PowerShell also. If you want to apply this policy for multiple users, you can uh, assign it this policy by using PowerShell only. The policy is applied. It's not refreshed here, but uh, it's, uh, it will apply it from here. So I think one error message would be there. Let me quickly show you. Okay, it takes a few hours to see the changes. And currently I have seen one of the message related to uh, teams due to recent increase team usage the SIM licensing user take around 24 hours so this is a service degradation message which I am getting from Microsoft 365 like the policy etc you won't be able to assign the team policies to them and it might take uh, some time or more time so let me might be the reason so okay you can see now it's updated So the policies are updated here and uh, similarly I can assign it to any of the user account if you want to apply it for uh, bulk users you can use PowerShell as a recommended structure we can integrate the various apps also mm, I will create one more video on this how can we integrate uh, multi, you know, third party apps and their integrations with uh, 
Microsoft Teams. Couple of organizational void settings that we can define it from here. It's an external access. And that's external access. You can, uh, users can communicate with other Skypes of business or team users or not. So you can see it from here. Uh, we can restrict it or we just want it to keep it as it is. So users can communicate with other Skype for Business team and team users. If you turn it off, it would not allow an access and that is the recommended one. So you should not allow it. If you want to specify a specific domain, you can add it here, allowed or a block domain. The setting is available in Skype for Business on-premises also. Okay. Uh, we have a guest access option. So if you allow the guest access, then guest users can log in in your environment or they can integrate or participate in your channel, but it is not recommended still for messages, etc. If you want to assign it, I just keep it as it is in office state and it's always not a recommended setting. You can define your team configuration and the team settings uh, availability here. Details like foils, organization structure, device management. Upgrade option is available. So let's upgrade it. The notify me when the Skype is business upgrade to team is available or not. Uh, and download the team app in the background for Skype for business users. So these are the couple of settings that are based on your organization, etc. We still have a call quality dashboard. Uh, it's called CQD. If you can click on this, from this you can uh, uh, access the CQD and the CQD is a, a complete defined structure. You can define it at on-premises and integrate it this solution. Uh, to check it out your audio video conferencing we have an still available legacy portal that is your sky for business old portal so just I clicked on that a couple of planning options are there for the network planner and team planner so bandwidth calculation and everything you can do it from here let me quickly show my old sky for business portal and what we have if I clicked on legacy portal this one I'll be getting an older Skype for business portal to manage environment it is taking a couple of minutes to load Okay, now you can see the old one where you have a limited options, limited settings, organizational wide settings. With the help of this, you can easily integrate the options. Audio conferencing is not available in your country. And meeting, broadcast page, URLs tools so everything is almost similar okay let's go back I will create one more video on this specific to Skype for teams and you can refer my series Skype for business in that you will get more details on IP plans dial plans etc okay now just going back to uh, our security and the compliance center so this is also option available in your office 365 that provides your security compliance related uh, tasks and activities so earlier the exchange specific part is only included in exchange but now microsoft consolidated uh, all the things together in the form of security and a compliance center what we have here 
we can uh, get alerts we can define the permissions classifications we can define our exchange dlp policies like detailist prevention policies that uh, mostly related to emails etc and uh, we have an data governance some settings restrictions you can apply it uh, you have a threat management option to manage your uh, identify your threats and take some actions so that you can restrict your environment on this we have an advanced threat protection uh, as a, and we have an exchange online protection as a part of that uh, advanced threat protection option we can set search uh, we can do search and investigation also so with the help of that uh, you can use a discovery exchange e discovery and discover the messages or anything that happened uh, like audit log settings etc also you can search it on the same page we can find out the user activity reports we have an service assurance and trust portal also from microsoft 365 to just maintain the compliance and the privacy structure i will quickly show you before going to that uh, to next one if i go to my exchange admin center we have an security and the compliance sent sections available so let me quickly click on both ones one by one and show you if I clicked on all the settings you can get all these security compliance everything would be here okay let me quickly sign in and see okay so this is the security and compliance center for Microsoft okay you can see here here the compliance manager and data classifications uh, data connections and then the alerts at alert section you can view it no data is available right now none of the alerts are generated we can see the reports if anything happened or any activity no audit data tell no okay let me quickly scroll down this and show you the various options so this is what we have in e-discovery that was a part of exchange this is my data loss prevention or dlp policies so i haven't created a policy if i want to create a policy i can create it from here and this will gives me a step by step uh, solution to create your policy earlier it this part was handled by exchange management console but now it's available in this section only what else we can do it here we can uh, configure let me quickly go back in my slide and show you the things what we can do it here okay so you can configure the retention tags and policies for the exchange so that will keep your messages and data for a certain time duration also if you want to en enable it we have an option uh, to enable it in the form of uh, e-discovery also let me just quickly go back on this so what it will do a retention policy in the exchange contains some retention tags and what are the retention tags tags have an associated value that is applicable for a specific mailbox level specific folder level if you want to keep a data for a year or two years you can apply a retention tag and that would be a part of policy and that policy will be applicable to uh, users so once you define this form what it will do uh, the archive it will keep the data for the governance purpose and uh, you can uh, retain that those emails or uh, you can for later on whenever you require you can fetch that data for your compliance purpose so how we can do that if we go back in my this section okay let me quickly start it from here
Okay, so the option is updated is in the form of information governance. Earlier it was as in data governance, but now we can see it. This is an updated option which is available as information governance. So when I clicked on this, I will be getting an options labels, archive, imports, retention, and the archives here. So from here, I can enable archiving for a specific user. Let me quickly select it user and I can enable it. Current status is disabled. If I want to enable, I can just click on this and I can enable the archiving for this user. Let me quickly refresh it and see. So this is now it's enabled. We can create a retention policy from here. Just click on new retention policy. I can put uh, like uh, keep one year. Okay, I can just keep the setting whatever I want to retain it. How much time I want? I just want to keep the one year only. Okay, when it's created or when it's not modified, okay, or we can take it forever also here, yeah? but I don't want to keep it. Do you want us to delete it after that time? Yes, and then I just uh, I can also use the advanced configuration where I can customize it more. Okay, so it will ask me to choose the locations where you would like to apply this policy. Scrap for business, exchange public folders, teams, channel. So wherever you want, you can put it like this. Exchange emails, SharePoint sites, OneDrive, Office 365 groups. So the things, whatever you want, you can select it here. Click next and then create this policy. So I can create a policy here and then later on I can apply it on the user mailboxes through PowerShell or through Exchange Administration section. Might be some time options are getting changed. Earlier it was data governance no option. Now it's data information. Okay, so similar way you can see they have given to create a policy where you want to create and apply it. This is how it's going you can configure your audit reports to track uh, your activities uh, changes or um, whatever perform the activity actions are performed so that can be um, checked with the help of of Microsoft 365 audit reports how we can see it let me quickly show you okay just move on that uh, location and see what on this okay in my portal it's a and uh, I need to select option for search and investigation so for the audit purpose this is the audit option is available Okay, start recording of users and the admin activities. If I can enable it, okay, that would be an organization wide settings. If I want to create a custom policy, I can create it a custom one that would be limited to a specific users or a specific uh, people. So it's, it's coming, it is taking a little bit time because I applied the recording activity for all the uh, users and you can search it with the same console only and this is most recommended approach if you are in your organization so what it will do it will show all the activities right now it's nothing is performed right uh, now if uh, I do log in or I may show you later on once some data would be captured here because uh, right now I have not uh, enabled that so it was not there but soon this will be available when I perform some of the activity for login log off 
even I can export it also in the form of events download all the result or save the loaded results for the compliance purpose that can be used might be this was the little bit older one uh, which I have taken now Microsoft updated uh, portal in a different form like this so that's why you are seeing this as an updated console okay and the Microsoft service health information you can get it at your home page itself only so when you go in your exchange admin center Microsoft will also show your health information that is this is service health so if any services uh, any of the services are impacted degraded you will get the information on this so all these right now up and running if any incidents happen you will get it here or you can report an issue if you want to here are some advisories that are issued by Microsoft and history you can view it from here if you have reporting an issue you can report it from here like this report an issue you can type a business impact information what which which service you are facing this issue and you can submit a description to submit your case this is a part of your health and services and uh, you can uh, also do the some auditing so that I have uh, shown you and compliance center itself only from there you can do some auditing work and you can get the service specific user activities a lot of things you can track it down because I've captured mostly all of that uh, activities if I create a specific one so let me quickly show that also okay in the same portal and if I create a custom auditive policy okay so you can because I have enabled it for everyone so I can keep the retention period for this and right now it's uh, events are not captured because I have not done any login log off etc so from this audit you can get the information regarding your auditing report and couple of information is also visible at uh, your home page itself only let me quickly just go back on my home page so from here you can also see uh, things whatever you have added Of some alerts messaging that are also based here like this I am getting it here your password expire after 90 days this policy which I have configured so I'm just getting an alert message we have options to configure the sensitivity labels uh, right now I have not created anything in the my compliance center but I can do that also I can put some information protections From here I can configure the labels for sensitivity like email message document everything I can manage my record management structure we'll show more I will create a video on this so we can get more detail on that and in the security compliance report you can also check the role group changes if you add remove the contents of mailbox you can put mailboxes in the litigation hold so how we can put it that will be most of the things would be taken care of in uh, different consoles like you can go in your exchange uh, console let me quickly show you a couple of editings that is still apart in your uh, exchange environment mostly uh, right now but might be a couple of things will get changed and will be available only in compliance center so from here you can see the most of the things which are available you can restrict the size you can restrict the mailbox let me have an option So 
sorry, compliance management. From here, I can place this. The retention policies and the tax are still available in this part and now further to that it will moved in my compliance center this is the default one I can apply it on the user with the same recipient section where I have shown you initially create it from here and apply it the retention policy and the retention policies can be managed from the record management this section also and the information governance uh, this is so a lot lot of things you can manage but this will apply for all the structure like uh, apart from exchange also and this one is limited to exchange server we are talking about that is limited to exchange mailbox in the compliance we can audit that report accordingly further to that service request that I have just shown you for the help and services if you want you can raise your service health request for that you have to go in the reported issues and you can report an issue from here you can raise an incident from here this is the basic message center from which you will be getting all the messages impact issues anything then okay for the Microsoft 365 troubleshooting if we talk about uh, so the service health option show you the services are up and running if anything is downgraded or any advices would be there we will be getting like this and we have a tool that is Microsoft Remote Connectivity Analyzer so with the help of this tool you can test your user account and on-premises system if you are integrating with uh, of Microsoft 365 so this is one of the best tool that uh, you have to use and with the help of this the troubleshooting can perform it will show that result uh, how it's going if any error message or anything that will also displayed here to uh, execute this you have to go to Microsoft test connectivity site or a test connectivity portal so this is just as a portal where you have to go and check it out how it, uh, it's the complete URL you have to enter it and then only you can access it we have apart from that one more tool available that is Microsoft support and uh, recovery assistant CRA so let me quickly show you the first one that is okay just go to side let me quickly and you have to type it okay this is the tool which you can see it from here also or you can type it here the address this is http colon slash slash then test connectivity connectivity dot microsoft dot com and once you press and enter so this will show the available options help me to identify issue with link dns exchange if it is exchange you can select it active sync sfb Sky for business link auto discover link connectivity test so these are the options office 365 office communication that was the OCS older versions so from the office 365 you can have to identify help me to identify my issue with exchange DNS with link DNS with single sign on service secret so whenever you click on any of them suppose your active sync is not working you can click on this so it will ask to enter the email uh, address and the authentication method modern 
or basic authentication the it will ask you a various couple of questions outlook connectivity it will also ask the same thing you can add the information and perform testing so that will show the error message so this is one of the best way inbound SMTP emails so it's asking you to enter your email address for example SPL test in and you can you have to enter think if I'm not wrong it's s5 kv kv v m v let's verify it okay did not match the picture so I'm taking it a new one okay ypv ypv and sxk i hope it would be correct okay 30 minutes now i'm going to perform a test okay let me enter a sales what exactly is my user account okay let me quickly open my user active users and see one of the address okay new sy user one so let me quickly enter the same it will try to check the smtp mail flow for that particular account and it shows it's working fine mx is resolving with the dns and you can see it's sending mail to this same way you can put any of the account and check it out is that working or not anything you can test it the couple of options i am busy wherever you are getting an issue you can test it from this tool so this is one of the best site testconnectivity.microsoft.com and with the help of this you can execute it if we talk about Microsoft uh, Recovery Assistant tool, so that is uh, mostly working with uh, most of the uh, compatible versions, that is SARA client. You can download it from here. This is the one which I gave given, and one of the tool is available with the message analyzer. So you can put uh, your uh, email message here and with the help of this you can analyze the message header. Let me quickly show you one account if I remember the username and the password for that account. Not sure. Okay, sales SYU1. I need to reset the password so I can show you this also. Message header analysis. Okay, in my admin center, and that is my sales U1. Reset password auto generated and reset it it is taking a little bit time more than expected anyways so it's reset now i just go ahead and log in with the password so Okay, I just opened the Outlook and see if any of the mails. Okay. And I have a message that one is this one. So if I take a header of this email and copy it.
this is my message header so I'm just going to copy this message header and let me quickly paste it in my tool that is message header analysis analyze the header you can see it will show the entire details of my message email flow from where it's initiated it's sent organized so you can identify the complete details of this message and the message header analysis you can put any of the message and in the message header so for the normal header analysis for emails you can also use that this is the tool when you clicked on this uh, SARA SARA tool so you can get it here support and recovery assistant with the help of this you can download this tool and install it you can simply click and it will verify the application and the requirements it will quickly start it but make sure your organization policies are allowed to do that okay let me quickly install it here Microsoft support and recovery assistant setup okay it's trying to verify and launching the application so it will take a couple of minutes and we'll see what exactly happened with next okay i agreed on this so now you can see which app you have a problem with this one click on next so it will give you in a step-by-step -step activity the team meeting option is not showing the team meeting add-ins does not load in now to select the problem you have if I go back and see, even I can sign it from here and check it out the issues with the windows with the office apps install or remove apps so the type of problem you can choose it and click on next to continue on the issue mobile devices password ink issue so this will help you in a step-by-step -step, uh, activities of and options identify the wings i have installed a window but i can't activate it for example this advanced diagnostics and it will be depends on your application itself only whatever the application you install and whatever the supported so you can check it out and accordingly if you want you can just sign it from here and enter the address to keep as continue this is one of the uh, tool one of the best tool which is available here okay so you can use that sorry tool and you can use this site also test remote connectivity site with the help of these two you can do it okay so so guys that's all about uh, this video today and i will create more uh, videos on this compliance and retention tax uh, and security section specific to our office 365 and uh, mobility and the security part also i will cover it in that so that's all about by today's video in the meantime you can keep watching my channel and do subscribe it have a good day thank you so much bye bye